Is it readable? Yeah. I'll tell you. <laughs> and this afternoon to celebrate. Okay. Oh, really? Um, okay, I think uh, let's start up again. <coughs> recording? Okay. The recording part. Okay, so for the uh, second talk of this morning, we have uh, Francesco, and he's going to tell us about, well, Hot Shack Rebellion. Yeah. It's a long title. A long title. Yes. Yeah. It's Sorry. too long. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you to the organizer for inviting me and for organizing this. <laughs> As many people say before, I'm very happy to. It's the first time I go speaking in person to a conference in the, since 2020. So, I'm very happy also for this to be here. So, today I. Uh, um, We'll share with you some of the results uh, we have obtained together with my uh, student, and now it's going to discuss the thesis quite soon, uh, Antonio Mastro Pietro, PhD student. And um, so this is our joint work. It's a part of his thesis. It's something we have really done together. And uh, so the main theme here is, is, as the long title say, is try to understand uh, how we can extend the uh, Shapley value, whatever it means, uh, to a coalition of Ks, and I will explain all the details, uh, in order to obtain some new tool uh, toward uh, uh, solving problem in so-called explainable artificial intelligence. So I have two versions of the talk. Uh, this is uh, some questions, so why Shapley? The question we, we try to understand to answer today, uh, what is uh, limited? Explainable artificial intelligence is a really a, a huge topic, uh, very hot now for certain reason, and um, uh, these things is easier to explain by example. But I have also realized the 40 second talk. So if you are in a hurry, I will do this and then we go. 
<laughs> so now here really is what we will do. We solve uh, an equation in terms of Laplacians over a graph, which is the positive graph of the subset of a fixed set. And uh, so most of the things here are about semantics more than calculation, because it's the meaning of the things, not what you calculate really. And uh, using the solving this equation, we find that the solution is unique. Uh, we build uh, an analogous of the Shapley value, again, whatever it is, uh, which is defined over the vertices over this uh, uh, graph, uh, whose vertices are subsets. And so in, in game theory terminology coalitions, and uh, we will see that uh, this solution, this is quite unexpected, is uh, a unique, uh, is the unique solution of this problem, um, is the unique, uh, what is called game map, uh, um, satisfying a kind of Shapley axiom uh, for a coalitional uh, version of Shapley. Shapley is, uh, is something that I explain now, okay? And uh, practically, the, 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 the purpose of this is to find a system to evaluate the contribution of groups of features in machine learning instead of uh, again, finding information about the single feature, which is what uh, Shapley uh, is doing in uh, machine learning, explainable machine learning. So now let's go more seriously to a very, very uh, quick uh, introduction to the problematic of uh, explainable machine learning, but uh, Actually, in this case, um, not explaining AI, but explaining machine learning. So, this is the basic scheme of uh, what most of the um, algorithm in machine learning does. Uh, in particular, if you are working in the so called supervised setting, no? so you have a, a certain set of data which theoretically are assumed to be sample IID from some unknown distribution. IID is fundamental, otherwise, many of the bounds that are on error uh, to uh, give uh, an estimation of true error that fail, it doesn't work. And in any case, usually you have here some uh, sort of uh, H, this H here, uh, which is a uh, so-called set of hypotheses. You can think there, there are any kind of things we will see after, but practically the archetype of uh, functions. Okay, so from neural network to uh, linear regression, multilinear regression, uh, half planes, whatever, you have a, uh, a certain family of function. They might be also quite uh, strange in a theoretical machine learning, at least like things like rectangles with uh, edges uh, parallel to the axis. Uh, so they are not analytically described, okay? In any case, <coughs> what you do, you use the so-called empirical risk minimization. So you try to minimize some loss. Some way you have uh, to measure how far you are from the desired result, it might, it might be, uh, misclassification, cross-entropy, um, uh, 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 mean square error, whatever. It depends what it is, okay? It's, it abstractly is in this way. And then you uh, go back uh, to your data. You have this, uh, I call them the unsolid. You have this test data that you never touch along the path and you simulate uh, uh, testing the data outside of your experiment, okay? I don't want to go, you know, tons of details that there are on, on Okay, just to, to make a, so as an example, typically the set of hypotheses typically is made of something determined by parameter and hyperparameter. It depends uh, uh, what they are, no? It depends, uh, uh, as an example, if you take a multi-layer per set, or it has, uh, you know, uh, the number of uh, layers, the number of neurons in each layer, which activation function, and these are all hyperparameters defining the archetype of your of your uh, uh, candidate model. And then you have a way that may be more or less complicated. We have seen before talking about gradients, stochastic gradient, uh, back propagation, stochastic gradient descent, whatever you use, somehow you try to find, I don't say the best, I don't say that you really find uh, the minimum in your list, but uh, you are looking for something near to that. You try to minimize your loss somehow. And this to turn out at the end, providing you really usually, in a function, no? So as an example, here you have a fine half spaces, which are very simple to describe as function, you know, uh, probably is the simplest be, 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 beside the constant function. And with this, you can do SVM, uh, you can also do it with kernel and so on. But I mean, the mechanism is this. And as an example, if you have, as I said before, you have MLP, you have all this parameter. What happened? It happened that uh, uh, practically, uh, when you finish your work, <laughs> you build a function that in certain cases uh, might, might have uh, something like million of parameters. 
or uh, thousands of, of variables. In machine learning, people call them features usually, or predictors if they are more on the statistical side. But in any case, you have all this uh, amount of things. So technically, it's not true that this is a black box. I mean, it's, it's, it's something very clear. But even if you write down explicitly uh, the, the, the composition of a fine transformation and uh, relu, let me say, of a multilayer perception with, uh, I don't say much, 100 layer, you find the function that you don't, don't know what to do with that. You put your fate <laughs> because it's too complex. There are too many variables, too many parameters. It's very difficult to understand what. As an example, what is the role in, in explainable AI try is a very um, large area of research which is devoted to try to understand how to get rid of this uh, mysterious behavior. There are many uh, problems and theme. One of the theme is uh, related to understanding the role of the various features <coughs> involved. Why this is important for several reasons. You know that nowadays many of these uh, models are in production and are used to make a decision, the, as an example, uh, concerning the people's life uh, related to health issues, as an example, insurance, justice, whatever. And so uh, beside that in Europe, we have a law that pretend to ask uh, uh, accountability of the algorithm, which is something that I think is quite unfeasible because even if the, you, you imagine you're the layman say, you didn't get the bank, you didn't give me the loan because the computer said that I'm not, uh, Comply, and then you go there. You explain yes, because here you have a uh, um, we have performed an autoencoder with uh, a variation autoencoder with regularization by Kullback liner divergence, and the guy say, okay, so what? What are you talking about? So no, is a uh, so the point uh, is this, but also there are other issues. But the actionability, actionability means uh, one of the problems with machine learning is there's ninety percent is a posteriori, you know, is describing something on the base of what it was. It is able, like you remember the famous paper on breast cancer using neural network made uh, by some people in Berkeley. I don't remember the name. Uh, they were able to find the trait uh, in the in the slice uh, uh, the human weren't able to find uh, and so on. But the point is that, and, and then, so what? When, when I know this, what do I do with this? I give you a big uh, uh, system that uh, is telling you, you are mayor of a town, and, and you, I tell you, okay, the population there is not happy because uh, uh, you measure things. And they say, yeah, but where I have to push to change it? If you talk with company like I do, they are very interested in understanding what they call actionability. How, how can I sell more cars? How can I make this better? You make an anomaly detection system, but they don't want to root cause detection. You say, why do you have this? Where I have to go to change? So one of the points is say, I have a, let me say, <coughs> okay. So there are various ways of doing this. Uh, very popular was, and it is, Yellow-wise uh, layer-wise layer -wise propagation (LRP), which goes, an example, on network uh, back in the network, trying to maintain some quantity constant and trying to understand uh, the, the role of the of the various neuron in a decision. But it has it turns out that this um, has some problem. By they made some sanity check, they see that even if you change perturb very dramatically the in internal um, layer of the network, LRP doesn't change. So it seems that there is some problem, probably because practically if you also see, imagine you have a network class making classification, practically layer by layer, you are seeing your data in a higher dimensional space, you try somehow to separate them, but the real decision is made by the light plus two layers. So what's happening inside seems to be nowadays still mysterious. In any case, one of the way it has been uh, suggested is to try to use uh, a game theory. And in particular, a certain kind of game theory that I'm going to introduce, they're called a transferable utility game. So the idea in, pr in practice is uh, uh, the following. A transferable utility game is, I need my classes. And um, so if you, like me, start as an algebraist, you say, okay, 
is a vector. So <laughs> it's a vector. <laughs> so it's a list of numbers. Nothing else. It's the interpretation that is important. Okay, it is a, from mathematical, strictly mathematical point of view, this is simply a list of. Is a vector whose entries are indexed by the subset of the set. And you ask, uh, you say, you, you have a game um, if the uh, vector has uh, uh, the uh, empty set zero and zero, the empty set entry equal to zero. Hmm? Uh, practically, the idea is this: you have some. Uh, something, a good, and uh, you form a coalition to try to, to obtain this good, and you have an evaluation of the result. This is the, the, the concept. It's something that is very old. Uh, and, I mean, it was at the very beginning uh, of game theory, things made by uh, von Neumann, Morgerstern, and Shapley. So, um, no, this is it. Okay, so I give you a couple examples because I do not assume in this uh, environment all the people know this thing, but uh, it's not complicated. This is an example. So it's very simple. You have a man which uh, leave one million to his nephew, but they can have the million only if, if at least two of them agree on how to divide the, the money. So practically the, the, what you have uh, below is the uh, so-called strategic form of the of the game. So you have that no one is, uh, uh, and one singleton, they all give zero because you have no agreement. You have to imagine that uh, a little group means they agree, okay? And so you have all the other group uh, agree, and so the pay is this. This is really trivial, but the, the idea is this. This is very famous, is uh, practically the first example in all game theory book, it's the globe game. Uh, so practically there are three guys, one has a left glow and the other two have a right glow. And they want to sell the glow, but they need to have a pair. And so if they don't put together, they don't gain anything. And this is the, the form, okay? I will not go on in this. There are, are you, as you can imagine, there is something enormous in this. There are books, uh, there are thousands of pages. There is a, a lot of uh, definition, classification, uh, a game is additive, subadditive, monotonic, uh, cohesive. Is, uh, that part I find uh, quite boring, really, to say, but uh, it makes sense. So the idea so is uh, due to Lundberg, uh, Sue in Lee, 2017. And the idea was to try to build a construction to uh, use transferable utility game thinking about the feature involved in your machine learning model. Since your favorite machine learning model, you take the feature, they are player, they concur in generating the outcome of the, of the model. Pay attention, this is not about training. Huh? The model is already trained. This is about the decision taken by the model after you train. You train the model the best you can, and then you start, you put, you know, meet in the mechanism and you get sausage, but you, you want to understand uh, how, how it makes decision. So <coughs> they introduced the so-called sharp explanation game. The sharp explanation game uh, is a game which assigned to a group of features, a coalition of players, the expected value of the model. Uh, uh, you fix, uh, I didn't write, okay. I write now the advantage of doing this, okay. X star is a fixed sample. So I put X star into the model. X star means simply you take a sub list of variables. Right? You project if you like. And you, you evaluate this. And uh, so, okay, we have a game, but we want to give some value to the feature to understand which feature concur more in deciding X or Y, cat or dog or whatever. And uh, uh, here's some notation just to fix. Uh, I use as is usual in this setting, GN to denote uh, uh, um, uh, the set of game and uh, on end player. And I call a payoff, a vector, whose entries are indexed by the number of players and uh, simply is an allocation of uh, something, of a word, to the various player. The key point is that, given that I have this game in strategic form, so each, each coalition 
as a certain words, like before with flows or more complicated things. Uh, how can I uh, distribute uh, the worth of the grand coalition when they are all together among the player, taking into account uh, the various uh, worth distributed among the, the various coalitions. So there are a lot, this is really about economic theory. There, there are a lot of uh, theory about this. So you have egalitarian, you know, it's a cooperative game. And you, each one, one head, one, uh, one share. So you take the number of the, of, uh, you take U of N, you divide by N, and uh, each one is the same. Uh, Shapley was not of this kind, was a marginalist. So uh, the idea is then to use this Shapley value and the Shap game to try to, to make this uh, redistribution of the decision. Okay. Uh, okay, so, okay, this is maybe I have done something very wrong. What I have done? Wait a second. Yes, this is something just to visualize because uh, I really don't know the people here, how much is involved in these things. So don't feel uh, uh, offended by it's very naive. <laughs> so I imagine you have a, a neural network and you have a picture of a cat or a, or a dog and so on. You have trained this uh, network to make segmentation or recognition of something in a picture. And the picture, how it works, you, usually you have this fifth forward mechanism. This is oversimplistic. These things usually is a long list of convnet. Uh, there are convolutions, so it's more complicated, but just to have the abstract idea in mind. And you have activation of the various neurons, blah, blah, blah. And then at certain point you write the end and it's a cat. So the idea is that I want to find a way to say which of these pixels, so which of these guys, wait to make a sort of ranking, let me say as an example of this guy, uh, uh, participate in uh, making the decision. Hmm? <coughs> I think the concept is clear. Okay, this is Shapley in a picture that I like because it uh, seems like a, a old sage or something like this. I don't know. He, he died, he passed away in 2016. He won the Nobel Prize and this Shapley thing that everyone calls Shapley value and so on actually was his PhD thesis. So uh, was a smart guy. Hmm? Anyway, let's see what, how it works. Shapley value. So this is the definition. Then we see that there is a magic definition because it does exactly what they want, okay? This is the first definition. Let's try to understand what this uh, uh, writing here means. Hmm? So given a game, U, and uh, a feature, I, so uh, the Shapley value, phi I, is defined by this formula is the average practically over the symmetric group, all possible permutation uh, of this delta i of s sigma of i. What is delta i? Delta i is what is called the marginal contribution. So I take a and I measure how much the worth of a increase if I add the player i. In the example before, the single player has value zero, then you add another player, uh, the nephew, and the value go to one. So in that case, it's um, symmetric group, and these are the preceding uh, uh, coalition, preceding I. So practically the idea is the following. I change the pages so we look at this. The idea is the following. Imagine your player entering in a room in random order. You uh, make all possible entries, and then you measure how high contribute when is added is the, the one that entering at that stage. Okay, so three people enter, then I enter, two people enter, then I enter, and so on. And you do it in all possible way. And a combi it is easy to see that combinatorially it is becoming this way. <coughs> because uh, simply the number there, S is the, because you permute the people keeping, uh, you know, the same people, but you permute the order in which they enter. No, you have I and then the people before. And N S minus I are the people coming after. So you get this. Okay, so just to give a little example here, take this uh, super simple game. There in the column, there is the game. Okay. So I have given an attribution to the various coalition. And this is the computation of the Shapley value. You see, you have all possible order. 
in, in which they enter. And uh, the number under the player, pay attention, is not the value of the uh, game on that player, but on the player plus all player before. So as I try to draw it right down, I was right up in the there, uh, here, I can use this, which is better. You see it, the meaning of the first row is there, and they're all the same. And the Shapley value are the averages for each player or their contribution among all possible permutation of the people entering in the room, in any order. Okay, problem with this. First problem is here. <coughs> this formula is nasty, it's gigantic, it is, and it's big enough. If you work with genetic data, you have 10,000 players. So write down that, <laughs> compute that, it's practically impossible. There are approximated uh, uh, version of this, one is called Shappi, and uh, if I don't I remember well, there's Kernel Sharp and other, and um, some of them, I have to say, they make overly simplistic assumptions like the, the um, variable are independent, uh, which, which is not, I mean, no way. Okay, you can, if you, are brave, if you are brave enough, you can try to apply ICA and try to make it independent, but then you lose any interpretation. And besides that, if you have 10,000 variable, playing PCA or ICA is not uh, so simple. You have a lot of problem with the game values, as an example. Okay, so in, in any case, there are some approximated version, but the key point for us was this, the, because you can, you can frankly, you, you can say, okay, this is a formula, but um, why you use this formula, this uh, combinatorial thing? And the explanation on this, the, there are these, uh, which are called fairness action and came from uh, economic theory. They say something, no? They say efficiency. What is efficiency? The worth distributed among the features, I say, instead of games or, or players, uh, must be, the sum of these must be equal to the total sum. You do not waste anything. This is the, the, the first. The second point, uh, if you uh, do nothing, if you are a null player, then the uh, CI of you must be zero. Okay. You are not uh, obliged to know null player, I realize now. And uh, so null player means practically that um, U of A union with I, is equal to u of a for all a in um, n minus i, okay? So practically, if you are there or not, nothing changes. Like those guys that stay in a corner in a party, you know? Nobody and even uh, perceive their presence. Symmetry is the obvious thing. For all coalition that makes sense, if you add i or j, nothing changes. u of i union i, a union i is equal to u of a union j. And a must be suitable. i and j are not there. Okay, linearity in the principle was not linearity. They asked only for some, but then it becomes clear that you can uh, a little bit uh, cheat and use this is okay. So the point is that even this it makes really sense uh, somehow. Uh, the, the Shapley value is the uh, unique, is the unique value for a few game, given a few game that satisfy all the action. There's no other. Um, that's a, there is another sibling of this, which is called Banzaf value, as a little bit different and satisfy a little bit different action. Having this kind of result leads us to the idea, shall we formulate this again for coalition instead of uh, for um, a single feature? And what are their actions for coalition? Because it must be not exactly the same. No? It must be another, a little bit different thing. And, uh, but besides this, uh, how we can do with coalition? And here, it arrived, object the composition. Ta-da! So, uh, first step. This is not an idea of us. This is 2000, um, 2000, let me check. I don't remember. I go back. Huh? Uh, Stern, 2017, yes. Okay. So uh, this is uh, clearly uh, something that you perfectly know. So the idea is this. Build a graph whose vertices are the coalition and connect those coalition 
Tetano and Stern were um, more interested in the traditional Shapley value. So they connect only those ones that are increased by one. So the Hass equivalent of the positive of, uh, of, the, of the subsets, nothing else. Huh? Okay, segments, only segments. Uh, so our idea was very simple. Take their work, redo it again, allowing any uh, uh, meaningful connection. So take A and B, A contained in B, and try to mimic what they have done, changing what has to be changed. And we succeed, but the, one of the proofs of this example is 10 pages because there's a lot of computation. Maybe in the future we will we'll be able to better understand uh, the, the in depth the, the reason why this work and to clean the proof. But for now it's brute force, okay? So, so I spare you, I, I can give you the proof, but. Anyway, you know this thing, simply we put ourselves in a very simple setting. We take the graph that I just described. <coughs> this is a general graph. And we use very uh, plain things with R, uh, usual canonical basis, you know, and uh, inner products such that this is uh, uh, orthonormal, so Euclidean, everything very simple. So that if you go with basis and matrices, D and D star are simply uh, D and the transposed. Huh? Then uh, what happened? This is what we started with, the, the basic thing. You have this kind of, of what uh, we may call an hypercube, huh? because this is simply the uh, hypercube uh, in, uh, in um, zero, one to the n, okay? You take only the edges. Okay, so, um, so here you have the differential I told you before, the classical differential, no? Taking, you know, I mean, is basic thing and uh, uh, taking the difference of the value, but you can partialize this bit. You, you can decide, I compute other map similar to the differential simply taking only increment by I. So the, this is depicted by coloring the edges. I hope that the color are readable because maybe one is too similar, often one is color blinded because it put all this red. In any case, um, okay. So this is the tetanol work. And uh, the point is that uh, working with this uh, and using the object composition, uh, which uh, actually in this case, to be really fair is, is uh, more than uh, topology we should call linear algebra this because uh, this is simply the fact that if you multiply a times a transposes time a, you have this composition. There's nothing else. There's a really linear algebra over a characteristic zero field. Very, very super basic uh, things, okay? In any case, uh, in this case, again, what is important is the interpretation. And uh, practically it is clear that using this decomposition and taking the orthogonal projection on the image of the differential, you can express the, um, the um, uh, the I of U as a differential of something, and you call this differential UI, this something UI. It turns out that if you restrict the two games, so you fix the uh, U of uh, empty set equal to zero, uh, D is injective. Uh, it's very simple to solve. I mean, the reason, the reason is clear, H0, uh, as that is zero is one, it's connected. So the, the kernel is one dimensional, but the point is the kernel is exactly uh, those vectors that are constant on the, on the, on the vertices, so it's done, okay? Uh, so with this in mind, we have this, and this is the candidate in the sense that, uh, <coughs> sorry. There is a unique solution for the reason that I have said, and it turns out, uh, this is the point, that the Shapley value is exactly this UI, is end component. You make some computation, and the reason is the following. You write down the action, you saw that most of them are satisfied practically by the entire vector UI, right? which is a, is a game actually. And, uh, but it turns out that uh, um, as an example, uh, the symmetry is uh, satisfied by the last component, the UN. And so since uh, the theorem of Shapley, uh, this is unique. There's no, so this is Shapley. So what, when we see, so this, it, it was very interesting because you know you see those formula here uh, with all this uh, uh, um, uh, mess, uh, no? This uh, on game uh, finding that this actually is uh, you can find it by using the differential on cochain for, for, for me was 
very, very interesting and stimulating. So the idea after some thought about how to extend this, we decided to go on. Sono andato troppo avanti? No. Yes. And this is the, what I was telling, the proof practical business. So you, you show that, uh, they show that you have all these properties. Practically, these games, the UI game, uh, that we can call high differential game, uh, are a decomposition of the original game. And uh, this, deco this decomposition has the particular fact that uh, the last component, the one computer, it's a game, computed on the entire uh, uh, collation, is uh, producing um, exactly the Shapley value. And um, yes. Is there, if you think about this, of trying to kind of organize the utilities of the different coalition actors, mm -hmm. is there a way of interpreting what comes out as kind of obstructions to utility or some, right, like a gradient flow part or a cycle part, or is there a way of interpreting it? I'm not completely sure I understood what you mean. It, 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 you, you, you are talking about the machine learning model yeah. that would come out. What about, is there a way of thinking about these? Yes, yeah, this is the, the, the things uh, we were, I, 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 maybe I, I gone through this too, too quick. Uh, let's see, uh, where is gone? No, fuck. Uh, Don't say. Okay, it's here. This is the way. This is the way they propose, but there are other you, you, you can imagine. So the, what comes out from the uh, machine learning model when applied to a point is considered, uh, you take the expected value, etc., and you assign to all uh, coalition of features uh, a value, uh, a word, let me say, and so that you, you have a gain. Then you apply this sharp uh, thing that I told you, and you uh, find uh, a way of giving. Uh, so this is not, I mean, uh, esoteric. Uh, these things uh, on uh, Odge and so on is not super popular. It, it comes out on a paper in uh, some economic journal, on economy. The sharp algorithm uh, is even included, is in secular. And if you, even in orange, you take orange data miner, so there is interpretability, there is the graph, uh, typical graph of the shop with the silhouette of the, of the feature and their value. So it's, it's implemented uh, per se. This is one thing we want to do. We want to do it for coalition, the same thing. <coughs> so the key point is this for us at least, there are values coalitional proposed for coalition and Shapley value, but um, uh, it, my purpose now is not to make a, a comparison because it's not the purpose of this conference. We have done in this work that there is some comparison with the other approach to construct some coalitional value. Eh? There are several, but uh, practical our idea was very simple. So I take the, the, um, the graph we have seen before, but instead of taking only uh, uh, edges like cube, we take it full, okay, like this. Take it full, take all comparable set, and try to understand what is the contribution of a coalition S with respect to a coalition T, you know? Um, the formula can be nasty because you can also consider uh, intersection, but uh, the main proof of gone, uh, you, you consider this joint subset and you add one to the other, consider coalition like, uh, like fellows, okay? And uh, using this, you can practically uh, mimic the game that we have uh, uh, seen uh, before. So you start, you have only to define what is this uh, LS, US, and so on. Aspetta che però ho saltato una cosa. Yes, it's here. Okay, the S practically is the same as the I. So you move in direction S, adding S, where it's possible to do that. And so you try to put all these things together and see what happens. So, so let me say, doing this in this way costs nothing. You do, then you don't know what to do. In the sense, you find something that you don't know what it is. The key point was not described in this, but uh, was, this is a simple calculation because what we have said before remain for the same reason. 
the uh, Laplacian is injective over games and so on. Nothing changed for connectivity reason. And so um, uh, the key point is that we define the uh, coalitional Chablis in the same way. So we take US of N, where now US is computed with the system that I told you before. So mutatis mutandis is the same thing. But the key point that making very painful calculation, we were able to discover that it has a very simple form. In this case, it becomes this formula. This is the value that we have found using all this differential and so on. And uh, <coughs> you say, okay, so what? Uh, so first thing, there are axioms and that's the only one satisfying this. There's nothing else. So the fact that there's a very simple expression is good. You know, when you make a some complicated computation at the end, you find a very simple expression. Somehow you guess it, you say, hmm, uh, maybe I'm trying to do something, you know. In Italy, we say we pay more for the souls than for the fish, you know. And, uh, but at the end, uh, this uh, simplicity make this uh, more feasible for computation. Even though clearly here there is an exponential issue because you have uh, to consider all subsets and you can consider to use only part of the subset. As an example, in a persistent fashion, you can filter on the size of the coalition or you can threshold and consider partial Shapley values somehow, okay? Because this is computed directly from the value of the game in a very simple uh, way. And um, so, this is what uh, we have found. Uh, what I can add uh, to this, uh, uh, any question on this? Is everything clear? Please. Yeah, to go back to this, slide. this one? one? One more. This one? Yeah, so, so here, I think I'm not understanding something. Because if you take S to be a single one, this looks like I can calculate your Shockley values without going through the combinatorial sum. Exactly. And so, but this is entirely equivalent. If I take S to be a single, then I don't have to do that. I don't have to take the sum over all the conditions. No, but this is not, yeah, but this is not the Shapley usual. It's not, do not coincide with the Shapley. No, because um, I can tell you this. Uh, um, I, I, I did include in, in the talk because I, I, I was not, it was not clear to me how much time I needed to do this uh, to explain. But um, we have made comparisons. Uh, as an example, what you produce with this is a game. What you produce with Shapley is a string of n number, which is only uh, 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 what is called an imputation, okay? You, you're sending number to the player. I produce number for all subsets, for all coalitions. So actually this is a game uh, uh, key, okay? First, um, second, if you look for the value for the uh, key I, let me, let me say, consider this key, not the, the Shapley fee. You use key and you look for value for features, uh, it clearly, this is not the Shapley value because otherwise the sum will not, the sum of all this on, on all, on all uh, coalitions will sum up to the grand coalition worth. And the Shapley value only with N sum up to the coalition worth. So the, the, you cannot get the same value. This is, uh, another thing is this, um, that this thing that you see here is a Shapley value, but of something else. Right, and, and I don't know what, what that is. It is the Shapley value of what is called quotient game by S. So you take your game and you consider a quotient game done this way. It has only two player, S and minus S, okay? But this seems strictly more useful. If we go back to the cat example, single pixels don't tell me that I have to look at collections of features, right? So this yes. like it's strictly more useful than Shapley game. No, I don't know. Uh, no, this is simply an interpretation. So this is the Shapley value uh, for S, which is one of the two player. In the quotient game, was player are S and N minus S. The quotient game is like a, a module. You, you, you regroup and then you consider subset uh, uh, and the value is obtained by computing the, the game on the union of the things, okay? 
in general, you can take a quotient game by listing a subset. And uh, even better if it is a partition like this case, and you obtain a new game. And uh, if you compute the Shankly value, the original Shankly value for uh, this quotient game here, you get exactly this. Uh, not exactly, yes, you get this. So, if you don't fully enumerate, right, start with some subset, mm -hmm. is it possible to start with that subset, get a value, and maybe do some type of Monte Carlo onto another part of the subset, recompute? And is that coherent, or do you need, right, the entire? No, you don't need the entire thing because uh, the competition is quite local, as you see. You need only to know the value of the game on the coalition mm -hmm. and on the complementary coalition. Once you know these two, you can compute this. If you want to compute the entire key, you need the, to compute everything. But so you could actually think about sampling. Yeah, you can, partition. it's a good idea. Yeah. Sampling, uh, you make a random partition and then you compute on yeah. that and make an estimation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, also because you have some natural constraint, as an example, you can measure the difference between the value, summing all this value and take the, value, the the worth of the grand coalition, you take the difference, you can use this as a sort of loss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, good idea. Good idea, yes. Okay. Um, please. Oh, really? Okay, cool. Uh, but yes, I imagine, but I don't think with this because it's unpublished. Yeah. Yeah. But that, yeah, it's, it's clear. I mean, you do so, you must do something like this because otherwise it's un un uncomputable. Uh, practically, at, uh, as soon as you have more than, uh, let me say, probably 20 variables, you, you, you can do nothing with this. See if you want to compute do everything because, you know, you get zillion of. Uh, <laughs> of, uh, of summons. Okay, the map is the only one. So practically, this guy is the, for us is the uh, 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 coalitional analog of the Shapley value classical. And uh, um, although at the end we have uh, this very simple formula, uh, the proof are based on the combinatorial, combinatorial decomposition. So we need really to use Laplacian and so on to prove the uh, unicity. It's not based on the formula. Because the formula satisfies the action, but the fact that it's unique is, uh, is more tricky. Anyway, uh, here we have a little application to linear model. So uh, we, this is uh, the shop we, that uh, Sayang was asking about before, huh? a way of, associating the game to the prediction, let me say. And uh, if you have a very simple linear regression uh, with uh, independent features, so start really with uh, vanilla playing stuff just to understand what happened. <coughs> then one uh, uh, can uh, uh, see that the corresponding game is this one by means of this. Then uh, this is, uh, I don't remember the name of that uh, uh, paper. It's a paper from a woman in Norwegian. Uh, okay, she, she proved, she showed this, that sharp can be computed, it comes out in this way. I, I, I will put the proper reference. Making some computation, you practically in this case, see that uh, our uh, Shapley S in this case is an, uh, a sort of average of the, the Shapley there computed in the other way. So in this case, you have this decomposition. In general, it's more complicated. But practically, um, what our Shapley is doing, if you think a little bit, first, you take uh, all coalition, uh, a very coalition, and then uh, mm, you uh, pair S with N minus S. So let me say the opposite coalition. And you make a Shapley. You, you give a value to this and the other in the quotient game. Then you take these numbers and you average in an egalitarian way among all coalitions and you get our Shapley. This is the description practically in terms of game theory. So you are Shapley the, the guys like they are individual A and B 
And then uh, you take the Shapley value, all the Shapley value you find the form again, and they practically you subdivided the work among all college in an egalitarian way. So it's a mix between egalitarian and marginalist. Okay, so um, I have, I'm a bit early. From, uh, I think no one will complain. Okay. Oh, yes. So instead of having a neural network, like, mm -hmm. let's say my classifier or something like nested trees. Okay. Right? Then you could be able, should be able to use that structure to very efficiently write out all of those partitions, right? Because each of the computation is something that's nested, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Interesting. You have a logarithmic algorithm, right? Yeah. It's, it, it just does that. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Thanks. Let's go on. Sayang is giving a lot of work to do for me. <laughs> <coughs> so at the very um, what we want to do now beside all the things that uh, Sayan kindly suggested I'm, I'm not joking I'm serious and um, so uh, first of all um, there is another stuff that work on coalition which is very interesting which is called Grabish derivative there is a big book on set uh, theoretic function by Grabish and other and they work on um, several indexes. Uh, uh, there is an interaction index, there is this derivative, and there is a relation between derivative, Möbius transform, and so on. So this kind of things, okay? And then with application to the NPR. And um, so we have uh, discovered that there is a very neat uh, relation between our differential and at the end our our Shapley stuff uh, and the Grabish derivative. The Grabish derivative is that stuff, that uh, delta, and S U T. I think now you all uh, get are acquainted with my notation. I mean, as uh, sets coalition and use again. So if S and T uh, are disjoint, uh, as you see, is a sort of Möbius transform, but it's not exactly the Möbius transform. It's very similar. Okay, and uh, this is the definition of the derivative. And now you can uh, see that the, its derivative has this uh, invertible relation with uh, the differential. And using that, we have some formula relating key Shapley with uh, his uh, uh, interaction index and other things. So this is one thing we want to de develop uh, and uh, that will come out very quickly because it's practically finished. So we need more numerical experiment. We, did, we didn't have time to do that. I'm sorry, but I would like to present more. Uh, we have several uh, already in our uh, repository, several things done by us on a standard data set or, or our data set using the classical Shapley. Now we want to use the, the Shapley, our Shapley to see what happened. Uh, because as an example, it would be very interesting for us to... Ah. Uh, it's my timer. Um, it would be very interesting for us. It was almost a mathematic example. To try as an example, uh, taking the data that we already have on the brain that we use in the paper, homological scaffold that we wrote many years ago, and try to see if we are able to cluster somehow the, uh, the, the area of the brain with respect to the outcome of the operation. So we want to work on this clustering. And so we think this might be of use as an example in doing uh, pruning feature selections, uh, uh, aggregating, you know, feature clustering, this kind of operation. Uh, you can, no? And uh, last but not least, uh, um, it can be done something using also C2 triangles, higher relation. Uh, that's something I, I, I would like to understand as an example. It's not clear to me what's the meaning. Because if I do the order complex out of this poset, simply a triangle is a, tree, is a chain with three elements. No? But it's not clear if I add B and the, as an example, you may try to understand what happens if you add B. You go to C passing through B instead of going through E, no? as an example. The way is, these things is measuring what happens if you add a group to another group. The other way may be a way of understanding if there is a 
a privileged direction, a, a better way to do that, let me say, measuring that. This is one, one thing uh, we want to go on. And then uh, I think I have finished or not. No, I have already said this thing. Sorry, uh, I'm, a, I'm a disaster. I, I, I always anticipate the slide. So, okay, thanks. Yes, I just to do that thing. That seems to be related to things all relevant to the variable selection program. So you have an independent variables and whatever you want to infer from it. And then there is this program that you make a sub collection of n minus one variables that they that don't influence the, the result, but if you add another one, they feel people are thinking a lot about it, and that seems to be very related to the problem we are considering here. Mm -hmm. Is it or am I going to it's, uh, it's something I have to think about. I, uh, that's job of mine. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't um, I understand what you say, but uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, so, let me say this uh, reasoning in terms of like statistical moments. You know, this is like, a, you know, it's a single variable, it is, is an average. And what you are talking about, something related morally, something like covariance. And I think that, you know, or, or, I think that there you must be a sort of tension form of the things. Because if you want to have a chain of relation, this relation, by definition are pairwise, so you need something defined on pair. So you can define on pair, as an example, you can take the game you have done, and you take the Shapley of the Shapley. It's, it is stable, it contracts. It, 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 it remains the same things up to um, an amount. It is multiplied by a scaling, it is scaled. Nothing. So once you have done once Shapley, it, it remains that way, basically. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, maybe mimic something like when you compute variance covariance matrix. So you can, but I, I I'm, I'm really brainstorming loudly. Uh, <coughs> actually, I'll ask one more question and then we'll do the announcements. Um, do you think you could use this if I gave you some type of like, I don't know, disjunctive normal form? And I want to reduce it down, right? In terms of like some logic induction or reduction of the logic, you use this to say that you could strip out all of these coordinates and have the same. Yes, uh, we, we, we I, I, I don't tell you no, but I don't tell you yes. Okay. I, I, I tell you, let me think about that. Yeah, I understand what you mean. Yeah. You, 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 Boolean variable, disjunctive for Yeah, okay. Any okay. problems in the world? Yeah, so, so unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately, we have unfortunately we have one, an additional one that I have deviation in the program. Um, so after the coffee break, we are going through the same thing like talks and the uh, Nick is over here. Uh, unfortunately, Jacek Brodsky got COVID and he, he couldn't make it. I was trying to convince him um, to join over Zoom, but he is not capable, unfortunately. So, so we have one talk. After the coffee break, and then there will be another uh, 45 minutes of, of break before the lunch. And um, there was a request yesterday um, to change the order of talks in the, in the later session today. So there is the session with uh, Vanda, uh, Fiok, and Anastasios. And um, that's exactly the order as it happens. So in the schedule that you have printed, there was Anastasios, Fiok, and Vanda. But now we simply reverse the sequence. So, so keep that in mind. Uh, one of the sessions we did the, 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 the talks are uh, That's all. Let's have the coffee break. Uh, I really enjoyed the talk. Thank you. Yeah. No, uh, yeah. I'd be very I interested. Appreciate it. I'd be very interested. I'm always using some of this stuff. I, I'm, not, I'm always feeling that the things I do are not so interesting. So. But I'm not, I'm not, um, 